and apparently we are live. I think we're live. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you can hear me and see me okay, as usual, please let me know uh, in the chat if everything's working fine, which I'm just going to get working now because for the 90 millionth time running, it's not working. Hi, Adam. Thank you very much for joining in today. Let's just get the Facebook live chat working in case you are watching this on Facebook. Uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm hoping some people have broken up for Christmas. So yeah, hopefully the chat's working okay. So uh, yeah, welcome Adam, uh, Lone Jedi 70 as well. Thank you very much. And anybody else who's watching who's not active in the chat today, I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of Teotihuacan, City of the Gods. Um, as part of my Patreon drive for this month, I'm basically doing a lot of solo playthroughs in addition to lots of other playthroughs. This is the first of eight live streams this week. Yes, I am completely crazy. I'm doing eight live streams this week. This is the first one, and this is all part of my Patreon drive to try and reach the next goal to do more solo playthroughs, which I am happy to announce as of two hours ago. Oh, and Kent's here as well. Hi, Kent. Great schedule this week. Thank you very much. Um, as of a couple of hours ago, the Patreon goal has been met, so I'm extremely happy. I was hoping to make that goal by the end of the year, and we've made that goal before Christmas. So basically, what's going to happen is moving forward into 2020, I'm going to be doing uh, at least one solo playthrough a month, which is voted on by my Patreon supporters. So a massive thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters and to those new ones who've come on board in the last couple of weeks to help make this goal. Um, Paul Bryant's here. Nomi's here. Solo mode, your favourite. Excellent. And Barris is here as well. Hopefully you can help me with the solo mode because I've not played this game in... In fact, I don't think I've played this game at all this year. So I am a little rusty on the rules. I've had a bit of a refresher this afternoon. But I got distracted editing the Dead Reckoning rulebook, which is really cool. So yeah, apologies for that. But I'm not uh, sure of the solo rules. So this is going to be me learning the solo rules of the game, uh, whilst also obviously playing through the game. And it's going to be a bit of a, a reminder to me on how the game plays. As I say, I'm okay with the rules. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can help me out with the solo rules, especially those people who have played it before. Phil is here in the Facebook chat uh, and said it's working fine. Right, um, what else to say? That's about it. Um, yeah, this is not a sponsored video. This is purely funded through the Patreon campaign. I'm here with Monkey today. We're going to be doing the two-player... We... The solo game is actually a... So you set it up like the two-player game. So there's actually non-player workers on the board as well because it needs the full complement of workers. But don't worry if you're one of these people who doesn't like um, solo modes requiring extra maintenance for, for other players. They just sit there taking up space. So that's absolutely fine. Right, I'm going to switch over to the multi-camera setup now. And I may need to do just a little bit of work on the other camera. Yeah, so that's working fine. That has switched over. The Facebook chat has disappeared. So let's just put that on again. Facebook chat. Uh, and there we go. Right, so the Facebook chat is there. The YouTube chat is there. And we should be ready to go. Let's just fiddle with this a bit so it's a bit more tidy. There we go. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't set the other camera. So the other camera, as you can see, I've got it. I've got it set up. But I haven't. Hang on a minute. I just need to. I just need to fiddle this a bit. Move this this way. I did have this set up ready. So apologies for that. Yeah, I've got the other camera sort of set up there, giving a kind of a 3D view of it. But I could potentially zoom in on that one a little bit more. Um, but yeah, let me know. I can I can get that up. Oh, and the colour's gone all funny. What has happened with the colour? How strange is that? Uh, colour. Reset. Mm. I don't know what's happened with the colour there, but it looks very, very pink. Uh, let's just sort this out while you're, while you're waiting. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, Vitaly's here. Hi, Vitaly. Thank you for joining in. Uh, he's in the Facebook chat. Christine is here as well in the YouTube chat. And I'm just trying to sort out these colours, which were working, as usual, five minutes ago, and then have gone all funny. I mean, is that... Yeah, I'm hitting the reset button, but it's... How strange. I'm going to hit that. Yeah, that is very, very strange. I don't know quite what's gone on there. Uh, Matt is here saying you had trouble figuring out the bots, but got there eventually. Excellent. Well, I can't really play with this all weirdly coloured like that. Um, I say, I had this set up before I went live and it all looked okay. And now, all of a sudden, it's not. 
Uh, let's just check. Overhead camera. Overhead camera. Yeah, settings. I've reset them all. That's very, very odd. It looks really horrible. I don't know quite what's happened with it, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and drop. Wow. The contrast down. Maybe the brightness down. That looks even worse. I don't know what's going on here. I might just turn off the overhead camera. As usual, technical issues I've, that I've never had before. Bear with us a minute. Let's just fiddle with that. That should just be the brightness. That's a bit better. Maybe it was just too bright. There we go. That looks a lot better. Now, if I reset it. How's that? Is that looking OK? That looks OK to me. Right, I'm going to go with that one. So it looks a little bit oversaturated, but I've dropped the saturation down digitally and hopefully that's OK. So, yeah, let me know. <laughs> Barrasir is saying that dig the saturated colours for what it's worth. Um, yeah, but they, they did look awful. <laughs> and let's just resize that. And then we are ready to go. I say first of a few streams this week. Uh, so a few teething issues to sort out because I've been I've changed the way that the setup works. Right, um, there's a couple of people on Facebook that also said they were going to join in this to actually learn how to play the game. This isn't going to be a tutorial video, but I am going to be uh, sort of explaining bits about it as I go. So a very very quick overview. We're trying to get as many points as we can. We play over three eras. Uh, when this light disc here reaches the dark disc, there is an eclipse. We do some scoring. Uh, then this marker moves to there and we do a second era and then a third era and then we do some end of game scoring. Um, with the solo setup, I have done the solo setup as per the instructions. It's got its own pyramid of action tiles. The seven action tiles, six of them form a pyramid. And then we have a seventh one, which is just off camera here. Um, hopefully you can see everything. Let's get that out of the way because you don't need that. Um, let's get the rule book out of the way just to tidy the things up a little bit. Yeah, hopefully I've zoomed in enough this is all my cocoa um, i'm also using the advanced setup so what we've got is we've got uh, action boards which you will see i have placed over original boards that were printed on there that's because we're using the advanced setup so you shuffle these tiles together and randomly place those three uh, those six out these two here are always fixed which is the palace and construction they are the same not using the expansion no i've not i've not read how to play the expansion yet and I've not played it. So just, just the base game. Um, so uh, basically Monkey, who is the bot, um, I'll refer to him as Monkey rather than the bot. So Monkey is red and red starts off in certain positions, as you can see here. I'm playing blue and the bot always goes first. The bot always uh, is the start player. So what's going to happen is basically Monkey's going to take a turn, then I'm going to take a turn, and then that is the end of the round, and then this marker moves on. There are other ways that this marker can move on as well. I believe uh, whenever, when anybody ascends, so when a worker gets to uh, level six, they ascend, they effectively die, a new worker is born, and when that happens, again, the light disc moves on. So there is a couple of ways the light disc can move on. Um, and yeah, I, I won't explain the action boards until we get to them. So this is the bit in the game where I am going to have to read the rule book to see how... It plays. Now, what happens is the game comes with... Ah, now, where's my dice rolling tray? My dice rolling tray is down there. Bear with us a minute. I'm just going to get my dice rolling tray. Right, I have my dice rolling tray. Thank you very much again to Jason Dingham for this dice rolling tray, which is pretty awesome. Where am I going to put it that you can see it? Uh, I'm going to put it there. So what happens is on Monkey's turn, we basically, we roll the dice. So there's two dice left over. The black and the yellow dice that you see here are the non-player dice. They're never going to move around. They just make that area more expensive to take actions in. And you get more cocoa when you go there. So the black and the yellow dice are fixed. There's one left over each. And what we do, Monkey takes games more, a lot more seriously than Paul does. Yes, don't you? Yeah, we've got Loki down here as well. So Loki will probably wake up at some point. I should have Loki cam. That's what I should have done. I should have got another camera set up on Loki. Anyway, right, we roll the dice. 
and we have a 9. And then we refer to a little diagram in here, which is a bit of a shame that this isn't printed somewhere else. I should have printed this off. So 9 means it's going to do this action here. So let's have a look at what that action is. Uh, when you will look at, yeah. Ah, when playing solo mode and either you or the bot builds a pyramid tile or a decoration action, instead of refilling its place, slide all tiles left stroke up and refill the bottom space instead. Right, okay, so that's a slight change. When you unlock monkey's worker from a worship space, instead of move, right, we'll get to that. Right, so roll the two unused neutral dice, done that, got a nine, so it's doing this one. Perform the action shown on the tile. Then what's gonna happen is that, remove the tile that was activated, so that one will then go, and we shift the tiles below it, if any, that are selected by the direction tiles one level up. So this one and this one will move up. And the way that you work out which one will move up is you look at this tile, I believe, here. By the direction tiles, one level up. Then place the previously unavailable set aside one. So that will, that will go to there and that one will go to there and then that one will come in. That's how that works. If that is not true, um, please let me know. Yeah, Matt's saying you're always the first player in solo. And Daryl's here as well. I thought it said... I probably got that wrong then. Oh, the player starts the game. Thank you very much. Right, so I'm the first player. Right, forget that. We're still going to keep that, but I take the first turn of the game. So does that mean I should get an extra one cocoa? Because I chose these setup tiles, which gets me five. One, two, three, four, five. No, so I should have one. Monkey should have two. So I'm also playing with the setup variant. Well, it's, it's, it's the proper rules where you get dealt four setup tiles, choose two of them. That's the resources that you start with and that you then choose where your workers start. I didn't get any worker upgrade. So all of my workers on the board, I'm blue, by the way, all of my workers on the board are starting at level one. This one here starts at level three. I will get that as a bonus for when I ascend, if I choose that bonus. Right, so the setup tiles can disappear. David Digby's here as well. Thank you very much, David. So forget that. We now know what Monkey's going to do, but it's my turn. So on your turn, you do one of three things. Well, no, you, you yeah, two, one, sorry, one of two things. You either take one of your workers, as long as it's not locked, and move it clockwise one, two, or three spaces. You can't stay where you are. You can't move more than three. And then when you get to your destination, you then do one of three things when you get there. Alternatively, you can spend a turn to unlock all of your workers, right? I don't have any locked workers at the start of the game, so I'm going to look at my options. I could move that worker, and basically, the more workers you have on a location, the better that action becomes. But the more different coloured workers that are there, uh, the more expensive the action costs to take. But one of the things you can do when you get there is just to take Coco. And when you're taking Coco, you want different coloured workers there. Now, one of the things I wasn't clear about in the setup, uh, Stephen's here from New Board Order. Thank you very much for joining in. So anybody who's played the solo game, please help me out here. But it says, when we've done the setup, so this is this is not the solo rules, this is the setup for the two-player game. And we're using the extra dice as the dummy workers. Uh, those neutral workers count as a different coloured worker for all game purposes. So my question is, is yellow and black, is it two different colours? Or is it just one different colour? I think it's two different colours. And I'm going to play it as two different colours. Uh, Ian Smith is here. Internet on street recovers from brownout. Love a bit of COG, but can't pronounce it. Teotihuacan. There you go. Easy. Took me about 100 times to pronounce it correctly, but I think I've got it now. Unless I'm live on stage doing a seminar and then I freeze up and I can't pronounce it at all. But Teotihuacan. There we go. Right. So I'm going to play that black and yellow are two different coloured workers. So this is one of my options, is I could move this to here, and I would actually get, I think it's four cocoa or five cocoa. You get a number of cocoa equal to the number of different coloured dice there, plus one. Uh, disregard any locked workers. Uh, you count the number of different coloured workers already in the worship space. Two different colours, thank you very much. So yeah, if I went here, I would actually get five cocoa, which is quite a lot. However, I start the game with a lot of cocoa. If I wanted to do an action here, I would have to pay four cocoa to do the action. So I'm probably not going to do that. I could move this one. I could move it one, two, three to here. I could perform the action, which is not bad. 
that's going to be relatively cheap and that mean that will give me some extra wood now i started the game with four wood so i don't really need the extra wood at this stage but it would be useful uh, it would be useful uh, there you go i've got in with a pun already um because which is the place for building houses over there right there you can build these houses um that's what wood is mainly used for and construction a little bit as well so yeah wood is always useful uh, Ella's how to pronounce video was very helpful. Yes. So yeah, so that would be five cocoa if I went there. If I went there to perform the action, let's just check this. I want to make sure I get the rules right, obviously. There's enough people in the chat that know how to play, so hopefully I should be okay. Um, performing the main action. Yeah, count the number of different coloured unlocked workers previously pr present on the board. So if I wanted to go here and do the action, it would cost me two cocoa to do that. Uh, I could go there, I could go there, I could go there. So I kind of had a plan. The thing is with this game, you, unlike Zolkin, that also uses the similar setup tiles rules, you determine your starting setup before you determine where the neutral players go. So I didn't know they were going to be there at all um i've only got one stone the quarry is over there i don't have any workers there oh no i do i do have a worker there so i could do that now i started the game with three gold and technology is really important so i might just go and buy a technology because technology is quite cool from what i remember so let's do that Let's move this worker, and I'm just going to go one space to here, and I'm going to choose to perform the main action of this space. So I have to pay one cocoa, because there was one, one coloured worker already there, and I'm going to perform the main action. Now, the main action of this, this is alchemy. It's basically it's technology tiles, and I'm using the... Um, I've taken six at random. I think this is the promo tile, which I can't remember how that works. <laughs> uh, so it looks like you can move an extra one each time you move. Alchemy is a good start, says Matt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, remind me what this pro is. I think it's a promo tile. It's tile number four. It's just got a slightly different shade to the rest of them. That's why I think it's a promo tile. Yeah, and it isn't in the back of the rule book. So, yeah, that's definitely the promo. Let me know what this does. Tile number four. I think once I've got that, all of my workers can move up to four. But we'll see. I might actually take that one. Because I've gone here with one worker, I can only choose the top row. If I went here with two workers, I could choose either of them or one worker with a four or five. Now, I've only got one worker with one, so I can only choose ones in the top row. Uh, and they cost gold to take. So that one will cost one gold. That one will cost two gold. This one will cost one gold. But this means whenever I use action two, three or four, I get wood, stone or gold. So that's going to be great for harvesting additional resources. Yeah. Think that's can you zoom in on it uh i can zoom in on it this is where the other camera would be would be useful there you go can you see that it's basically it's a one and an arrow with a foot in it is what it is that color still doesn't look right it's an extra movement point yes thank you very much graham Just fiddling around with the uh, <laughs> with the colour because it still doesn't look right. That's a bit better. I've upped the brightness quite a bit, but I think that looks better. There we go. Adam saying he loves this game. Should play it more often. Yeah, if I had a list of twenty games that I'd like to play more of, this would probably be in there. Don't ask me to name the other nineteen because I've no idea. Right, anyway, I've gone here. Which one of them do I want to do? Do I want to take? Now, I think the other player gets a bonus if I choose that one. Again, I'm a little rusty on the rules and I apologise for that, but this isn't this isn't like an official video or anything. This is me just playing through the game. Um, yeah, every other player who already had a disc on the tile immediately scores three points. You may not develop a technology you already know and you do advance up the appropriate temple. And... 
that might influence my choice as well. I think let's go for it. Let, let's go for the promo tile. So I'm going to spend two gold because if it costs two gold, it must be good, right? And I'm going to place one of my discs. Where's my discs? They're off camera. On there. Uh, monkey doesn't get any points because he wasn't on it. But now I advance one up on the red temple. So every time you, you see this icon here, it basically means I can advance up the appropriate temple. So I advance up here. And that icon there is very simply one point, which is why I started on a point, because I was already on level one of the temple. The solo player starts on level one of each temple, but doesn't get the benefit of it. Uh, Matt saying three point bonus. Yes, they get the three points. But yeah, they would have done if I'd have gone on there, but not if I go up, not if I choose a different one. Um, and that is basically it. I think that is my go done. So now we go to monkey's go. We roll the dice. We've got a nine. Monkey is choosing that action there. And this is where I'm going to read the rule book to see what that action is. That is worship. Advance the advanced monkey's worker on a worship space to the next clockwise worship space on a temple sidebar. Okay. Uh, which worker? Which worker does it choose? And the bot does not pay for performing actions. When a tile instructs to find the boss, bot's highest powered or lowest powered worker, and there are multiple ones, well, it's not asking for the highest powered or lowest powered, so I guess it's just any of them. So we choose multiple workers of the same power, select the one closest, uh, clockwise furthest from the palace action board for highest power, or clockwise closest to the palace board for lowest power. Oh, there's another expansion coming. Uh, can you zoom in on the main board to fill as much of the shot as possible? I can, as long as you don't mind not seeing my resources. I thought you'd want to see the stuff that I've got. I mean, I can move that down a bit. I mean, you don't need to see those. That's fine. And I can kind of put my stuff here. There you go. So you can just about see all the resources I've got. What you can't see and it has just been destroyed, is the action selection for the bot. And I think that's pretty important for the solo game. So I'm just going to try and recreate this. And I will, I will bunch it up as much as possible to get it on. There you go. You can just about see it. There you go. I think this bit is really important for the solo game because it's how the solo player takes actions. And I'm going to put that there. There you go. I've zoomed in. It's like 1% bigger, but there's, there's not much else I can do now. Um, you have set up the last worker on the decorations board wrongly. It should be on the worship space of action seven. Oh, thank you. Uh, decorations board is number seven. Oh. Decorations action board power number one. Yeah, worship space. Thank you very much. Well spotted. That goes there. Right, there you go. So, yes, my question is, how do I know which worker uh, advance the bot's worker on a worship space to the next clockwise worship space? Right, so there is only one on a worship space. So that's, that's handy. Um, advance it to the next clockwise worship space on a temple sidebar. So it's not that one. It's not that one. It's that one. So that goes there. Um, if there is one of your workers on that space, no. The bot advances on the matching temple by two spaces, gaining rewards for both and gaining printed bonuses instead of discovery tiles as mentioned before. Well, I haven't read that bit, but it's going twice up on the grey temple, which is here. So it's saying that instead of getting the discovery tile, um, it gains the printed bonus instead. Oh, you're right, Loki. It's squeaking away gaining the printed bonus instead of the discovery tiles as mentioned before. So where's the as mentioned before? I was hoping to be able to read just each individual section. Uh, I might get to that in a minute. Can you let me know what that means in the chat? It says, yeah, the printed bonus instead of the discovery tiles and the printed bonus is, oh, it's that. So it'll be a cocoa. Yep, there we go. Right, I've worked that out. It's a cocoa. If the activated space is on the decoration action board, the bot advances on any temple by three instead. Oh, right. Okay. So if it landed there, it would go up on any temple by three rather than the matching temple by two. 
discard the discovery tile near the activated space and immediately draw a replacement. Right, so it doesn't take that. It takes the printed one, but that gets discarded and we get a new one. There we go. It's printed under the tiles. Thank you, David. I got it. Um, bot pyramid at the side. Yeah, I could try that, Nigel. It, it, I mean, it's only going to mean zooming in about another 2%, but I can do that. So, the, there. That, that's about all I can zoom in now. It's not really possible to zoom in anymore and have the stuff that we need on screen. And I'm not even sure this is going to fit. Okay, it sort of fits. Not really. Okay, let's just squeeze that off a bit. Yeah, I think I think it was. I know what you're saying. I know we need as much of the the stuff on screen as we can, but zooming in an extra couple of percent, I don't think has made that much of a difference. And I do really want to have that on screen. There we go. Right. Okay, so where were we? It's done that, it's done that. Is that all it does? Yeah, advances, discard that, draw a new one, and done. Right, so that tile now goes, and according to this, that moves up to there, and then this one comes in place like so. And then we do something else. We switch these over. Uh, remove the tile that was activated, shift the tiles below it, if any, that are selected by the direction tiles one level up, then place the previously unavailable set aside tile into the there. Flip the top direction tile to its reverse and move it below the other one. If the bot now has 10 or more cocoa, discard 10 cocoa from the bot. I think that's right. Uh, the bot only takes masks when it uses that action. It never takes any other tiles. Right, okay. Uh, and advance the light disc on the calendar track by one. Yeah, because it's going second and that's it. So I think that's right. I think that moved to there and that moved to there and we're done. Right, so it is now my go. Second round. Just get me water because it's quite thirsty. Colin's here. Evening, Colin. Thank you for joining in. So what did we learn last time? I've now got four movement. I probably want to use that to my advantage. And because I need stone and the quarry is over there, I can move four. So I'm going to move this one one, two, three, four, using my newfangled boots of speed. Um, and now what we do is we look at this area. So because I've got two workers in this area, I use this uh, middle row here. Uh, and then you look at the lowest powered worker, which is one, and it, you cross-reference that and it tells you what you get. Oh, I'll tell you what I should have done. That should have leveled up. Apologies, that should have leveled up to two. Um, do the Do the... AI, do, do, do monkeys workers level up? I don't think they do. They only level up if they do the action. So that definitely should have leveled up. And now we've gone here after I've got me one stone, one of those levels up. There you go, done. Now we roll some dice again. Okay, I'm gonna move these resources off camera because you don't need to see them. And in fact, it does make it look a little tidier as well. So get those off camera and we'll have the dice tray on camera and hopefully you can see what I've rolled or maybe not. We have rolled a five. Now I've got to keep looking at this book because it, yeah, this would be handy to have. So five is that one there. So it's going to do that action and that action is alchemy. If the bot has one or more gold, yes it does, it has two. Uh, and it has at least one worker on the alchemy board, it does not, then it would spend a gold and gain the technology in the lowest number that it doesn't have. If all remaining tiles are right, 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 right. Either way, advance on the temple matching the thing. Then the bot advances. The bot does not benefit from technology tiles. If the above step failed, power up its lowest unlocked worker by two without carrying out any actions or advancing any workers. Right, so the above step did fail because it, is, it doesn't have anything on alchemy. So we're looking for its lowest powered worker, lowest powered unlocked worker. So that's a two, this is a two, and this is a two. And whenever we're working out the lowest one, we go clockwise 
from closest to the palace clockwise. So palace is here, clockwise from there is this one, so it levels up that one. I think that's right. Monkey levels up when it tells you to do. Pay one cocoa for the worker. Ah. What? Pay one cocoa for... Oh, me. Yes. For taking the action here. Thank you. Did forget that. Um, right, so it's done that action. So that disappears. We now look at this. Are we always looking at this top tile? I'm not sure what the bottom one is, which should be actually that way around. Um, yeah, I think we're always looking at the top tile. So that one goes to there. And then that one comes in and goes to there. And then that flips over and goes to there. I think that's right. That's what I'm doing. Let me know if that is not correct. Because there was a part of me that thought, you're not going to see these because I because I'm ended up going to put them off camera. But if they were if they were to the side like this, I didn't know if that one applied to that row and that one applied to that row. But I don't think that's the case. Anyway, let me know in the chat if I've got that wrong. And then we move on the light disc again, and then it is my go again. Right. Well, all I did is I collected one stone there, which wasn't particularly <laughs> particularly great. Um, these technology tiles, I thought these gave you something else other than just the special abilities that are on them. And obviously, if you're playing a four-player game, other people are likely to get those technology tiles. Um, so where are we going to go? How are we doing for Coco? We're okay for Coco. Do we want to go and do some constructing? I could. I could do some constructing and I could construct one bit and, and I'm looking at the tiles that are available and you're looking for coloured symbols because coloured symbols will move you up on temples and there isn't any of those but there is something that's going to get me some points which is quite good so I could go on here I could spend one wood and two stone and I could build a temple thing and then I could level up so I think I'm going to do that where's my other worker it's here yeah, I think I'm just going to move this one. I'm going to move it one, two, three. I'm going to perform the action here, so I have to pay one Coco to do that. Uh, Matt is saying, no, use top for second row and the second for bottom. Right, so I did get it wrong. Okay, that wasn't clear in the rule book that bit. So from now on, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to use this top tile here for this row and this one for the bottom row. But then you always you always flip the top one over. Okay, right. Uh, what did I do? I've paid the thing. I'm now going to construct one piece of the temple, uh, and the different costs are basically on the level. Now, the reason this is already built up like this is that this is a uh, a two player game, so um, you can actually see that that some of the temple is already built. This is the initial setup for a two player game. In a four player game, it starts completely empty. And just bear with a minute, I am going to move that other camera around so that you get a good view. I'm just going to walk around here a bit. Come on, you've got the camera. All right, if I do this and zoom in, how's that? Is that a... No, I got that wrong. There we go. That'll do. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that won't low key up. Right, I'm back. Cool. Thank you very much, Matt, for helping me out with the rules there. So anyway, I'm building a piece. Do I want to build on the bottom level? Or do I want to build on a higher level? I think I want to build on a higher level. I could actually build there. No, I can't. I can't build on the third level because then everything underneath it needs to be complete. So I'm going to spend two stone, one wood, and I think I'm going to build this piece because this, when I build it there, will get me some points. Because if every, for every symbol that I match, so I'm putting that on top of that, that on top of that, that on top of that, that gets me one point. And then if, if the symbol on top was uh, red, green or blue, I would also advance up the temple. But anyway, that's what I've done. I've spent two wood, one stone, 
Uh, that actually gets me three points for building that level and an extra three points for that. So I get six points and I go up to eight. Um, and then as it said in the, the changes to the solo game is instead of just refilling that space, you actually slide them to the left and then you get a new one. Now we get a color. I think that's right. I hope that's right. And then I level up. I only used one worker, so I can only build one piece, but then that levels up to three. Right, monkey, what are you gonna do? You are gonna do eight. And what is eight? Eight is the top action. The top action says nobles. So this is this tile here. If the bot has at least two wood, yes, and a worker on the nobles action board, yes. It spends two wood and builds a building. Right, so two wood is spent. Before the first eclipse, which is now, place it in the top row. So we take this building from here. We always take the leftmost building from here and we put it on the top row. Now, does it get the points for that? The bot does not pay for performing actions and it only collects cocoa to be exchanged for victory points or masks. So it doesn't pay for performing actions but presumably it does get the victory points. Okay, so that's going to get it three victory points. One, two, three. Um, after the first eclipse, it would go in the second row, and after the second eclipse, it would go in the third row. If a row is full, don't need to read that. Ah, score the victory points shown on the space just covered, and advance the bot on the avenue of the dead, which is exactly what happens when a player builds a house, is the avenue of the dead marker will move up. Uh, there we go. It gets the points and the building track goes up by one. Done. And what this is doing is this is revealing points here, which is basically you'll get points based on how far you up you are up here based on the points shown on here. That is it. That is that is monkeys go done. And then we move that piece to there. Is that right? So that goes to there. And then on the bottom row, that goes to there. That comes in. And then we flip that over and we put that up there like that. Right, I think we've got the hang of it. Excellent. Next, my go. I'm done. I've no stone. I do have quite a nice worker here, but there's no point putting another worker here because I don't have any stone to build that. So what we need to do is we need to get some more stone, which means going over there, but it's five away. Now, there are other things that can be done because there is, an, I, there is a place here in the Royal Palace where I can go, I can lock the worker, but I can spend cor uh, corn, cocoa, playing the wrong game here, um, to get stone. But I don't know whether I want to lock any workers at this stage. Decorations cost three gold. That's saying you built. Oh yeah, sorry, this one. Yeah, another thing that's always forgot, this game is full of little fiddly bits to remember. Whenever you build a piece in the, t in the pyramid, you actually move up on this track here, which is the how many pieces you've built in the pyramid track, is what I call it. Um, do I want to go here? I would get one wood if I went there. Don't want to go there. Do I, want, do I also want to go on the Avenue of the Dead? That will cost me two cocoa to go there. Hmm. I kind of want to get go here and get the cocoa, but I also kind of want to leave that there. These level one workers are rubbish. <laughs> need to level these up. Um, yeah, definitely need to level these up. And where is everybody else? Hmm. Okay. There's a lot of choices in this game. I mean, it's, I, I do like it. I like the fact that it's kind of a rondel. It's it's workers, but you've got so many choices and now that I've got an extra movement point I've got even more choices right let's rule things out I'm going to leave that there I don't want to go on here I have the cocoa okay I'm going to go very simple I'm just going to move this one and I'm going to perform the action and the action is going to be pay one cocoa because there's one other worker there decorations moving up too yes that's one thing I said should have been on the graphic design of this there should be this icon here should be on this. So I've done that. I have one worker there. It's level three. That gets me one wood. And then that worker levels up to four. 
There you go. Right, monkey, what are you doing? You are doing a 12. Where is a 12 on the thing? 12 is the bottom right. Let's try and remember these actually. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, try and remember that. So 12, it's doing this action here, which is alchemy. We've been there before. It doesn't have one on alchemy. Um, and even if it, oh, it does have the two gold, but it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have a worker on alchemy. So basically it doesn't do any of that. So what it does is it powers up its lowest unlocked worker by two. Did I do that wrong before? I think I did. I think I just leveled it up by one. In fact, did I even level up the worker at all? Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe I only leveled this up from two to three. Let me know in the chat. Carl's here from N20 Games. Thank you very much, Carl, for joining in. Uh, we're just trying to remember if I leveled this up by one or two, because I think they all start at two. So, and it, and the, the not doing the alchemy action does say power up its lowest unlocked worker by two. So I think that should be on four. Anyway, I'm going to up this one to four now and let me know in the chat if that's what I did. And that is the end of Monkey's Go. So that moves on. And then it is, um, oh, then we do this. So that gets removed. Nothing slides up. That comes in. And then that just goes there. Right. That's that done. In a solo play, are there loss conditions or are you going for points? Well, the loss condition is not getting as many points as Monkey. I think it is just that. I don't think the game can end early in any way. Uh, Ian Robinson is here in the Facebook chat. Thank you very much, Ian, for joining in. Uh, right, I think we're done. My go again. So moving that there was all part of a grand plan to get more wood. So I'm now going to move this one, one, two. I'm going to have to pay two corn. I'm running out of corn. Yeah, I'm going to have to pay two corn to do the action. But now I have two workers. So I use this column here. And the lowest worker is a two, which means I get two wood. Okay, and now I level up one of those workers. Now, at this point, I'm starting to think, should I be levelling up the number? Because getting to a six is quite nice because you can unlock some goodies. Oh, that's a quick question for the chat as well. I have the first printing of this game. And this space here says five cocoa, but the rule book says six. And I can't remember which is correct. So just let me know if the board or the rule book is correct with regards to that space there. Thank you very much. Um, so which one am I going to level up? Um, because a three is good. No, I'm going to level the four up to a five. There you go. And that is my go done, but I am now out of cocoa. Okay. Monkey, what are you going to do? You are going to do action number eight. So what was it? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to do that one. Mask collection. If the bot does not yet have one of the masks available near one of the worship actions, on the palace action board or any of the four temple bands and it can pay for its cost it pays that cost and immediately gains the mask draw a replacement for it immediately and do not move any dice if there are multiple masks that it could take right well there isn't a mask there there isn't one there there isn't one there there is one here and there is one here they are both the same though so it doesn't have one of them it takes the one with the lowest number. Oh gosh, they've got numbers on. Oh, it's no, they're both number two. If tied between multiple masks of the same rarity, picks the one clockwise starting from and including the palace action board. So it can buy this one. Does it pay the cost? And it can pay for its cost. One cocoa and one wood. It cannot, because it doesn't have any wood. If the above step yielded no masks, the bot gains five cocoa instead. Wow. And powers up its lowest worker powers up its lowest worker and then advances it. So its lowest worker now, uh, it doesn't say unlocked, it just says its lowest worker. I'm going to assume it means unlocked worker. Is what I am going to assume. Powers up its lowest powered worker and then advances it. Well, its lowest powered worker is this one. So we're going to move that to a three and by advance is it? Is it just that? Is that what that means? Is there some generic rules about advancing? 
Didn't see anything. Okay, so we're going to do that. And we'll see if that's right. At the end of its go, it only has eight cocoa. It doesn't have 10. Remember, if it has 10, it trades them in for some points. And that moves on. And then it's my go. Now, I have no cocoa. So I can only perform actions where there are no workers, which there isn't anywhere, which means I'm looking at taking an action that will get me cocoa. Um, and the best place to do that is actually here. That would get me four cocoa if I went there because it's the number of coloured things plus one. And I didn't really want to move out of the quarry, but I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to move this to here and I'm going to take four cocoa. Very simple turn, but some turns, that's just what you have to do. Oh, the audio is out of sync. Oh dear. More technical issues for no reason whatsoever. Um, right. Now, what have I done previously to reset the audio? I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, it does this some... T the last time it did this was about a month ago. And Matt's saying it skips that space. Oh, you mean the palace space. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know how bad the audio is. Let me know if it is a real problem and I can try and start rebooting things. In fact, I can reboot things anyway, just in case. Uh, when you unlock the bots worker from a worship space, instead of moving it to the general area, move it to the next empty temple worship space clockwise around the action board. Where's the bit where it skips the palace board? Yeah, let me know in the chat, Matt, about where the where it says that you. I, I believe you. I just wanna, I wanna know whereabouts it is. Um, audio is in sync here. Ah, right, Matt, it's you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's not me this time. Hey. <laughs> um, where was we up to? I think we was up to my turn, and I moved there, and I got four cocoa. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Right, so now it's monkey's go. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I've lost track of what's going on. Which is quite often the uh, the thing. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's doing another mask. Didn't we do that before? Did I forget to remove the mask? I must have done, because that's the last thing it did. It skips pace one, should be the movement section. Yeah, I think I forgot to replace things before because the mask is the last thing it did. So that should have gone to there, that should have gone to there, and then that should have come into there. Right, and then that flips over, and that goes up to there. There we go. Very clever this bit, but it's a little fiddly. There is an app which somebody told me about, Geraint told me about it, um, but I wanted people to see what was going on. Um, Oh, Loki's waking up. You right, Loki? Right, we've got another action. What is this action? Mastery. Find the bot's highest powered unlocked die. This one. This four here. Although I think that should be a four as well. Um, perform that actions. Perform that action board's action if possible. Right, it's on the construction space. See step one of the construction tile. Okay. I'll go to that in a minute. If the action failed, find the bot's next highest powered unlock worker and repeat step two. If an action succeeds, power up the worker in question, which might trigger ascension. Uh, if all workers fail to perform an action, the bot gains five cocoa, powers up its lowest powered worker, and then advances it. Okay, so we're doing step one of the construction tile step, which is if the bot has two or more stone, yes, and at least one worker on the board, yes, it spends two stone, and places the leftmost pyramid tile rotated randomly onto the top left lowest level space available on the pyramid grid of the main board. What? <laughs> there? The leftmost pyramid tile rotated randomly onto the top left lowest level space available on the pyramid grid. Okay, so I'm rotating it and rotating it. The red on space four should be a four. Yeah, thought so. But anyway, I'm choosing the highest worker, so it is still this one. Uh, you're saying you forgot to remove it. I forgot to remove what? Yeah, the problem with the chat delay is when you say, I forgot to remove it, I'm not sure what 
it means, oh, probably that. Yeah, okay. So that's going there. I think that's right. That's the top left available space on the lowest level. Um, and then it scores victory points for the level, which is one. Scores an additional two victory points and advances on any temple by one. Okay. Oh, advances on the pyramid, right? Yeah. Scores an additional two victory points. Okay. Why doesn't it just say scores victory points for the level plus two? And advances on any temple by one. This represents average points that Monkey would earn by matching icons. Okay. So now advancing on the temple. How do we know which temple it advances on? Whenever a tile instructs the bot to advance on any temple, advance it to whichever temple it is currently the highest on, ignoring temples where it has already reached the top. When tied, choose the leftmost of the tied temple. So it's already highest on here, so it moves up to there and it gets to Coco. When gaining resources, uh, rewards after moving up on the blue temple, it gets whichever it has the least of. Uh, the bot never gains or uses discovery tiles. Right, okay. So yeah, we did that. So that was that action there. Yeah, that was mastery. Okay, so now that gets removed. That moves up to there. And then that moves up to there. That comes in. And then that flips over and goes to there. And I think we're done. I think we've got this. I think we've got this right. That moves on, and then it's back to me. Now, my grand master plan, is it working? It might just be, because I'm able now to get this one, two, three. He says a grand master plan. I didn't really have one. There are two coloured workers here, two different coloured work, two different colours here. So I pay two cocoa. But now, because I've got three dice here, I'm using this bottom row. The lowest number is unfortunately still one, but I do get two wood and a cocoa. I have a forest full of wood, and then two of my workers level up. This is the important thing. With having three workers on here, I can basically level two of them up. Do I want to advance the six? That would get me my fourth worker out. So let's do it. Let's advance the six. So we have some ascension going on, and I'm also going to advance the two into a three. Is that what I want to do? No, I'm going to advance the other, the one into a two. Right, so whenever you get ascension, which happens when you get a die to a six, what happens is move one space up the avenue of the dead because somebody has died. A new person is born and goes on the temple and then I choose one of these rewards here and I'm going to choose this one, which is two cocoa and gets me my extra worker, which I think comes in there. Can't quite remember. Yes. Done. Oh, and advance the light disc on the calendar track by one. Ah, you do that when somebody dies as well. Right, okay. I'd forgotten that bit. So that moves on as well. Right. The bot has 10 cocoa. Yes, it does. Thank you for spotting that. So it should have traded that in and got some points. Three. Oh, it's overtaken me. One, two, three. Right, next. So monkeys go. Uh, we're on a nine. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one. Right, now, this action is decorations. If the bot has two or more gold, yes. If it has a worker on the decorations board, no. No, it does not. Uh, which means that doesn't happen, that doesn't happen, that doesn't happen. If the above step failed and the bot has at least one worker on the gold deposits action board, which is here, which it does, then it gets two gold. Lots of gold. If either of the above steps were successfully performed, power up a worker on the relevant action board. This might trigger an ascension. Okay, I don't think it has. I think it's that one. Uh, then advance the powered up worker. So 
I think we're just going to move it forward to there. Um, if neither of the above steps were successful, it gains five power. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. Okay, done. Then we advance this forward. We're rocking now. Oh, what's that noise? <laughs> Strange noises coming from Loki. Uh, I shut him in here all night last night. I was working on the computer late last night. And without knowing it, Loki had sneaked in, crawled in a corner somewhere, gone to sleep. Of course, I keep this room locked overnight. Got up this morning, couldn't find him anywhere, and then heard this meow. So I'm really sorry. I think he's forgiven me. Um, right, seven. The top spot. Top spot. Construction. If it has two or more stone, no. Then it does all of that. If the above step failed and it has at least one worker on the stone quarry, yes, it does. It gains two stone. Okay, and then if either of the above steps were successfully performed, power up a worker on the relevant action board. It has two workers on the action board, but that one's locked, so it powers this one up to four and then advances. No, yeah, then advance the powered up worker. Right, okay, done. Advance the light marker. We're rocking now. Uh, Mohammed's here. Hi, Mo. Thank you for joining in. We just got our head around the rules. I should have replenished this. That's what I haven't done. Uh, yeah, just got our head around the rules and we're now full steam ahead. My go. So four workers on the board need to start doing some stuff now. Um, and I'm not really looking at the temple increases. I'm not really looking at locked workers. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Not sure. Need some more stone. Definitely need some more stone. So I'm going to go here with the three. So I don't pay any corn because there's nobody there currently. The one that's locked in the temple bar doesn't count. So I don't pay any corn to do the action. I have one worker. It's a level three worker. So I get one stone and then we power up to four. There you go. Got one stone. Uh, monkey is eight. So it's the top action. Oh, I forgot to move it. That should have gone there, that should have gone there, that should have gone there, that should have gone there. That flips over and goes to there. Right, that was last turn. This turn I've rolled that one. Ah, now, that's the first action we did. I forgot what that is now. Worship. Advance the bots worker on a worship space to the next clockwise worship space on a temple sidebar. So that one moves from there to here. Uh, if there is one of work, your workers there, it unlocks that worker. The, the bot advances on the matching temple by two spaces, so that's blue. So there and then there, gaining the reward for both spaces. Um, discard the discovery tile. Get a new one. Okay, now, the resources that it's going to take are, whenever it takes resources, it did say, the bot picks whichever resource it has the least of. So wood. So it takes wood and then wood. Wow, look at that. It's got a lot of resources now. That moves down to there and we are almost at the first eclipse, which isn't good because I've not really done very much. What can I do? Can I do something to give me a bit of a, a boost in this eclipse? I'm not sure I can. Uh, no, I'm having a look around seeing what I can see. I mean, I could take a mask. That'll get me one point. Eh. Should that have been replenished? I mean, I think I think it told me to replenish it. Decorations. Can't do decorations. Need gold. Can't get gold because I haven't got any workers there. That's probably my best bet is just to get another stone and then go for more building next time. I mean, I do have all of this wood. Ah. Aha. That will get me some points, won't it? Yes, let's do that. Let's move away from here. We'll go one, two. I'll pay one cocoa because there is already one other worker there. I'll spend two wood. And we will place another house. And we'll put it on the top row. That gets me two points. That levels up. Back in the lead. Just. Um... And that moves me up on the avenue of the day. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Matt says buy a house. Yay, I did. 
That's exactly what I did. Right, monkey, what are you going to do? You are seven, which is the top action, which again, I forgot to move. Yeah, I think that helper app is definitely useful because I keep forgetting to do it. That flips over and that moves to there. So seven is the top action, which is decorations. It doesn't have one on the decorations board. It does have one on the gold board. So it gets two gold. I think that was it. If it's got that and that and that, it doesn't. Gets to gold. If either it's a power up or work on the relevant action board, yeah, so it powers that up to a five and then advances it. Okay, right. And then that goes to there and we have our first eclipse. Okay, so rules for the eclipse scoring are slightly different. Uh, oh, I forgot you've got to pay for your workers. Oops. Teotibot does not pay Coco salary. Teotibot does not score for masks, pyramids, or Avenue of the Dead tracks. But during the third eclipse, it will score um, stuff for Coco and some points for victory point markers. Okay, right. So what do I do in an eclipse? And I had forgotten, you got to feed your workers. So this is not going to be good. Uh, eclipse. Here we go. Right. Find the lowest visible number on the building's row of the main board, which is four. Each player scores that many victory points for each step they moved up on the Avenue of the Dead. But I think it just said that Teotibot, or Monkey, does not score. So I've got uh, two spaces up and it is a number four. So I get eight points. The player or players furthest ahead on the pyramid track score four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, with a whopping one build. Uh, then you score points based on which eclipse it is which is printed, I'm sure that was printed somewhere. It's four, three or two, based on where we are. There. So four points per building space. So another four. One, two, three, four. Um, different masks, no. One cocoa per worker and an, 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 and an additional cocoa for each worker with a power of four or five. Rats, I'm one short. Yeah, because I've got four workers and that one is level four. So I am one Coco short, so I lose three points. Ouch. One, two, three. I have forgotten about feeding your workers. If this is the first or second eclipse, reset the light disc. Uh, so the light disc goes back to there, but then the dark disc, the, the black disc moves to there. And then in a two player game, we additionally draw two starting tiles. Ah. I'd got rid of all the starting tiles because it said put them away, you won't need them again. One more round before scoring. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're just going to pause that there and I'm going to take one more round then before scoring. And in order to prevent the stone problem, I'm going to move that to there and take four cocoa. So actually, I'm going to gain me three victory points back. Gain four, spend one, so I should have three. Okay, that's that. I probably forgot to do these things again. I'm always forgetting to do these. How can I remember? So monkey's last turn is 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Is that one? So mastery. What's it doing? Mastery, mastery, mastery. Um, highest powered unlocked die. Well, that's these two. Uh, and this is alchemy. See step one of the alchemy action tile, uh, which means it spends a gold and gains the technology of the lowest number that doesn't have any markers on it. So it gains that one. Uh, advance it on the temple, matching the gain to technology and power up a worker on this action board, which may trigger an ascension. Okay. Definitely going to, definitely going to. So it moves on the blue temple, which goes there. And instead it gets a resource, which would be a wood or a stone. If tied, it takes gold, stone, stone before wood. So it takes stone. It's done that. It's moved up there. Um, when reaching a major step on a temple no where's the bit about the temple uh, 
I want to get this bit right. When gaining resource rewards, yeah, I've done that, right. The bot always gains five, selects five victory points as a reward for ascension, right? It's going to ascend. The bot never gains or uses discovery. Where's the bit? I mean, I read it earlier. It's the bit about going up on a temple. Gaining the printed bonus instead of discovery tiles, as mentioned before. Yeah, I'm not sure I should have discarded that one. Never mind. Uh, Peter is here. Why didn't you play with the late pre-classic expansion? Um, I, I hadn't played this game for about a year. I've never played the solo game and I've not played the expansion. My brain is already melting all over the floor. Um, so I didn't want to just throw in the expansion as well. I think the game is uh, great as it is. I've heard the expansion is really good and I am keen to try it. I just, yeah, wouldn't have been able to handle it today. I'm, I'm struggling with this. Um, anyway, we've done that. We've leveled up. It gets an ascension and it says it always selects the five victory points. So it gets five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then presumably, because this has ascended, it comes back there as a one and that moves up to there. And advances on the avenue of the dead normally. Yeah. So it's advanced on the Avenue of the Dead, but it's saying that it doesn't get any points for the Avenue of the Dead. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the point of it advancing on the Avenue of the Dead is. Oh, Teoti Bot does score for Masks Pyramids in the Avenue of the Dead normally. <laughs> Oops. So it should have got eight for that. 22. And it's actually now three times four gets 12 for that. A 34. Right. Now, what does it get for the tile on here? Uh... Where can you get the app? Uh, it's on BGG or it was posted about on um, the Board Game Trading in Chat Facebook group. Um, I can send you a link later on. So I'm now looking at the Avenue of the Dead and Discovery Tile Rewards and trying to see how that works. Right, Advance a Worker. So you go clockwise to the next action board if it's three or less, or clockwise to the second action board if it is four or five. So I may, may have done that wrong earlier. I was advancing these to here. I probably should have advanced them twice. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about it now. But I'll do that next time. Right, yeah, I don't think it replay. I don't think it, it just chooses the thing that's underneath, but there isn't anything. The bot never gains or uses his discovery tiles when reaching a major step. So it just it just lands there and doesn't do anything. It takes no tiles. There you go. Thank you very much. Um Right. Anyway, we were doing the eclipse. I think I've now done the scoring. I think I'm up to date. We've done that. Reset the pyramid markers back to there. You don't reset the avenue of the dead which I know some people do accidentally. I've paid my salary. Uh, oh yeah, starting tiles, that's what we were doing. So I need to get the starting tiles back out, which the setup instruction told me to put away. So I got rid of them. Uh, right, where are they? Here we go, starting tiles. Okay, got me starting tiles. So draw two, uh, give them a shuffle, to keep them off camera. And I'm just going to shuffle them all back in. So these are in, these are also included in here are the ones which I actually started uh, the game with, but I'm just going to shuffle them in anyway. So we draw two starting tiles and move the three workers of one of the unused colours onto the first three different action boards shown on the starting tiles. Right, I think I get this. So I'm going to move the black workers. Does it matter? Oh, and then repeat this. So I'm going to move the black ones first. Uh, and they basically go on 
6, 8 and 2. So it, I don't think it matters where they were. It's just a simulation of where they have ended up after the first round. And then we do the same thing again for the yellow workers and we've got 4, 3 and 5. So 3, 4 and 5 for the yellow workers. So that can stay. These two are moving. That goes there and that goes there. OK, that's a nice, simple way of doing that. Uh, yeah, that's what you do. If this is the third eclipse or if the pyramid uh, has been filled, you go to end of game. So I don't know whether I should shuffle these back in. I'm not going to. I'm going to remove them and we're going to keep these ones here. Uh, and we are now ready, I believe, to start the second era, epoch, age, whatever you want to call it. And a massive thank you to people helping out in the chat with the rules. I now feel comfortable that I know what I'm doing rules-wise, uh, which was always going to be the way with a game that I've not played in a year. Anyway, right, so do we have a plan? No, we don't really have a plan. We've got lots of wood. We could go a building, uh, more buildings, and I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move this two spaces. Now, because I've got two workers on here, I can place a little house from here, and I get the five points. Desperately trying to catch up. Um, so yeah, so I got me for oh, I've got to pay two cocoa for that. Running out of cocoa already. Um, so place the house, move up on the avenue of the dead. Now this time I do get a discovery tile. So what do I want? Um, I could uh, spend a wood to take a mask, and she's going to start accumulating me victory points if I get more masks. I could spend a cocoa to get three resources of my choice, which could be stone, which means I could then go a building. That'd be quite cool. Or that one, which I have no idea what it does. You are very useful, Matt. I'm not saying that he's I'm making him feel useful. I think it's fair to say I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Right, that icon there is when resolve use when resolving the main action on the alchemy nobles or construction board to treat the action as if you had an additional worker present. Okay, yeah, it's quite nice. But I'm going to take the mask. Might be a little late. We will see. I'm going to take that. Right, we're both on there. Done. Leveled it up. I think I leveled it up. Done that, built a house, got the points. Unlocked that, moved up on there. Bought the mask, job done. Right, monkeys go. It is eight, so it's the top action, which is the noble's action. If the bot has at least two wood, yes. Does it have a worker on the noble's board? No. If the above step failed and the bot has at least one worker on the forest action board, no. If either of the above steps were successful, no. If neither of the above steps were successful, the bot gains five cocoa. The bot gain, uh, powers up its lowest powered worker, which is that one. So it goes to a two and advances it. So because it's a two, it only goes one space. And there we go. Done. That moves to there. My go. Now then. Still want to get some more stone. But I need cocoa. Desperately need cocoa. So I think... I'm going to have to move this to here. So I'll move it two spaces to there and gather cocoa. Three different workers there, which means I get four cocoa. One, two, three, four. And sometimes you just need to do that. You just need to take cocoa. Right. Um, monkeys go. We have a three. So that's this action. So if the bot does not yet have one of the masks available near... Uh, yeah, it's basically, it's this mask here. Uh, and can it buy it? It can. It can pay for it. It immediately takes it. Move the tile from the bot. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So that goes to there, that goes to there, that goes to there. That flips over and goes to there. Okay, done that. Right. Uh, oh, so it's not that. No, it's not that action, it's that action instead, um, which is decorations. 
Doesn't it have a worker on the decorations? So it can't do that. Does it have one on the gold collecting space? Yes, it does. So it gets two gold. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because it's locked. It doesn't. Which means... The bot gains five cocoa. Powers up its lowest powered worker and advances it, advances it. So this is a two. So it powers up to three and advances and goes to there. Then at the end of its turn, it has 10 cocoa. So it gets three points. There we go. And that was that action done. So that disappears. Uh, nothing slides up and that comes in. But you still flip this over, I believe. There you go. Right. Uh, and then that moves down. And then it's me. I think we're okay now. Um, okay, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to move this one, two. Uh, there's only two different colours there. So I pay two cocoa. But now I have three workers. So I'm going on the bottom row. The lowest one is a two. So I get three points and three stone. And that's the way you do it. Three points and three stone. Boom. Right. And I level up two of those. So I'm going to level up. Yeah, we're starting to get we're starting to get good now. I'm going to level up the four to a five and the th two to a three. Yeah. OK, there we go. Monkeys go. Monkey is doing nine, which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one. So mastery. Just not sure of the order that you do mastery in. Oh, it's the the bot's highest powered unlocked die. This one. Yeah, so it's going to do the action on this board, which is alchemy. Step one of alchemy. If it has one or more gold, yes. And at least one worker on alchemy, yes. It spends one gold and gains the technology of the lowest number that doesn't have any markers on it. So it gains that one. Uh, either way, advance on the temple, matching the gain to technology. So it moves up on red, which gets it a point. Um, power up a worker on this action board, which might trigger an ascension. It does, which is resolved normally. And then the bot advances the powered up worker or the new worker if the old one triggered ascension. So it triggers ascension, it scores five points. One, two, three, four, five, because it always chooses that option. New worker is born, comes into play there, and we move that marker down because there is an ascension. Um, yeah, and then we remove the tile from the pyramid, I've remembered, and it's that one. So that moves to there, that comes into there, that flips over and goes to there and goes to there. Done. And then this moves down because it's the end of the round. There you go. Right, my go. Now, we have all of our workers over there, which is cool. Um, we want to get the workers here to start building stuff. Now that I have... Um, yeah, now that I have quite a bit of stone, I could do some more. I could do some gold to put some decorations on. Speaking of decorations, it's Christmas tree decorating tonight in the Gaming Rules household. No idea how the cats are going to cope with it. First Christmas with the cats. Uh, and yeah, not sure they're going to handle it. Uh, blue temple for that. What have I missed? Oh, yes, it was the blue temple, not the red temple. Thank you. So that goes down by one. We lose a point. It goes up to there and it takes two resources instead. It will take a wood and then it will take a stone. Thank you. And red marker moves up the avenue of the dead for ascension. There you go. Just when I think... I've got my head round it and I'm remembering everything. It's all these little bits that I'm forgetting. Well, that's one of the things with this game. It does have a few extra fiddly little rules that you've got to remember. It's, oh yeah, you've done that, which means you've got to move this marker up there. Oh, and then you've got to move that one over there. It's always been a problem with it. It's a great game, but yeah, it does have these extra little fiddly bits on. Anyway, what was we doing? Um, I was deciding whether to move that to get some cocoa. I think I'm going to. 
So yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna move this five to here and I'm gonna take four cocoa. Let's just take that. Done. Uh, David's here, hope it's going fun. Yes, it is fun. It's a game I do need to play more of. It's just there's lots of fiddly bits to remember. Um, so we're on 12, which is this action. So this is decorations, which it can't do. Uh, so does it have a dice on the gold collecting space? It does, so it gets two gold. Uh, then I'm gonna remove that and swap it for that. And then this flips over and that goes to there. I think that's right. Um, power up the worker on the relevant action board, which is this one. So that powers up to a four. Um, and then advance the powered up worker, which because it is now four, it advances twice. There you go. We move that along to the end of the round. And now it's my go. Red die on space one should advance. Should it? Okay, I'll take your word for it. I obviously missed that. I think I remember reading something out and then forgetting to do it. Right, my go. So we're trying to get here to build some stuff, but actually this board is filling up quite a lot now. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get myself some gold. So I'm going to move this one, just one, onto here. I then pay to do the action, which cost me two cocoa because there's two different colours there. And then because I've got three workers there, I do the bottom line. The lowest one is unfortunately a one. So I get one cocoa and two gold. Two gold, one cocoa, but now I can level up two workers. So I'm gonna level up the five into a six. And I'm gonna level up the one into a two. So the six ascends, it becomes a one and goes here. And I get one of these bonuses. Um, and I am going to pay I'm not doing very well on the temples, am I? I'm not doing very well at all on the temples, in fact. Is there any masks? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, not doing very well on them. Um, I could just take the five cocoa. That will allow me to do lots more actions. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to play it simple. Take the five cocoa. Uh, because I ascended, that marker moves up and that moves down. There you go. I remembered. Except I forgot to move the bot tile. Which one was it? Didn't I do the bot tile? I think I did. Yeah, I thought I did with the bot tile. What have I missed? Was it that? Problem is I'm now playing too fast for the chat to catch up. So Matt's saying advance the white marker. But I thought I did. Yeah, let, let, let me know what I've missed. Lower right, so that one. Okay, so basically I'm swapping that one with that one. And that one's going there. Okay, so that was for its last turn. But advancing the white marker, I thought, I thought I'd advanced it. Anyway, let me know if I did. Use biggest die. Oh, sorry, Matt. I'm I'm getting confused by the messages because I don't know what they're relating to. Yeah, no, I'm 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 confused now. Yeah, the lag the lag is a bit of a problem. Um, I mean, I'm trying to play quick so that people don't get bored. But obviously, if I make a mistake and then 25 seconds later, so I don't know what used biggest die means. I'm afraid. So yeah. Oh no. Anyway, I've just taken my turn. I think. Yeah, I've now I've now lost track of where I am. <laughs> I should have this up on another screen so that I can actually just watch it for when I get. Yeah, I've now unfortunately I've now completely lost track of whose turn it is, and what's going on. That's the disadvantage with the live streams playing on my own. So apparently I'm fine. 
Okay. Um, I just I just can't remember whose turn it was. What was the last thing that happened? I think it was my ascension, wasn't it? I went on here, did the three, got the three things. Right, so it's now monkeys go. Yeah, I think that's where we're up to. We've rolled a 10, which is this space here, which is construction. Does it have two or more stone? Yes. Does it have at least one worker on the construction board? Yes. So it spends two stone and places the leftmost pyramid tile, which is this one. So randomly rotated. Uh, can't you watch the stream on an independent device? Yes. Or try and fix my short-term memory problems, but they've been there for a long time. So that goes there. It gets one point because of the level and an extra two because that's the rules. So three points. It advances on the pyramid track. Um, and if either of the above steps were successfully performed, power up a worker on the relevant action board. So the four goes to the five. Uh, and then advance it, and that advances two spaces because it's a five. And there we go. Right, done. Move the light white marker down. My go. Think I got everything right there? I think. Who knows? Who knows indeed? Well, I'm just going to go and do this. I'm just going to spam this. So I'm going to put that on there. Spend two cocoa because I've got loads of it now. Uh, three dice. The lowest one is a two which means I get this column. So I get three gold, decorations time, and I advance on one of the temples of my choice. Um, now then. Interesting. Oh, these should have moved to the left and we should have a new one. Aha. Is that going to help me? Possibly. Yeah, because I can put those two things on and actually advance twice up on the blue temple. So that's not too bad. But I need some extra stone if I'm going to build three because the first dice there will build one and the second one will build two and I don't have enough stone to do that. Um, I could have just advanced on the red temple which is just points or the green temple which is cocoa. What am I going for? I mean I should be looking at these end game bonuses. That's 15 points straight out. That's five points for each uh, thing. That's victory points according to your masks. I've only got one mask. Um, so Matt's saying, advance on a temple trike. Advance the bot on a temple trike for the build. Yes. Remember now, construction. Yeah, advance on any temple by one. Thank you. And I think it advances on the one that it's furthest ahead on. And if tied... It goes blue, then red, then green. So it moves up there and gets two resources. So it gets a stone first because it has the least stone and then it gets another stone because it has tied. Right, okay, we're good. I think we're good. Uh, it's me choosing a temple track now. Which one am I going to go up on? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go up on that one and I'm going to take... Going to take another stone. Or do I take a gold? Oh. Gold is so good. No, I'm going to take stone. Right. Uh, so that was that, that was that, that was that. And I advanced two workers. So I'm going to advance... Uh, how close are we to feeding day? Hmm. But I have lots of cocoa. That's fine. I'm going to put that one on a three and that one on a four. My go done. Monkeys go. Did we remove the worker? Did we remove the thing last time? We didn't. Always forgetting to do that. I'm quite nervous when I do these streams. My anxiety levels are quite high. And that's that's my excuse for, for missing stuff. I wouldn't miss things if this were normal game night. Otherwise, game nights would be an absolute mess. Anyway, eight. It's the top space. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it now and put it here. Right. That's the action it's doing. No, we've not had this action before. Oh, no, we have. It's alchemy. Does it have one or more gold? Yes. Does it have a worker on the alchemy board? No. Um, so power up its lowest unlocked worker by two without carrying out actions or advancing anything. So its lowest unlocked worker is this one. So it powers up by two and that's it. Then that goes to there. 
and that goes to there. This one comes in, this flips over, goes to there, and then that one comes back there. There we go. That might be, oh well, yeah, the game is really fiddly, yes. Um, yeah, it is. And I don't mean that in a bad way fiddly, but there are just so many little bits to remember, um, which, you know, okay, it is a bad thing, but it's still a good game. We move that on. My go. Now, I've got loads of stuff now. Do we want to start decorating now? Or do we want to start building stuff? Because I can move four. I took this technology to allow me to move four. One, two, three, four. Um, which is going to be cheaper, actually, in terms of corn, to do that. So, yeah, I think let's do that. I'm going to move this one. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, because I can. I'm going to do the action. Oh, there's also this worshipping space. I should be doing that. Because that's a mask. Hmm. And then that would allow me to do that. And then that would allow me to do that. Hmm. Homla, homla. But I do want a decoration. Decorations are cool. Uh, and I can do a decoration that's going to get me a lot of points. I think. Yeah, let's just do a decoration. Right, so decorations cost three gold. I can take any of these four decorations, but I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on there because the icons are matching. Now, I've not built a decoration this game, so I'm just going to remind myself of the rules for decorations. Uh, it must be placed on a mark space. Yeah, can only put it there, there, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get one victory point for an icon that is red, green or blue on the decoration tile. The colour of the icon that is being covered doesn't matter. And you score an additional three victory points and advance on the pyramid trite by, by one. So I advance on the pyramid trite by one. For each icon covered by the same icon, score one point, which is two. So that's two points. And then if you scored points for red, green or blue, advance on the temple. So I only get two points for the tile placement itself, but I go up on blue and red. So that is... Any resource of my choice, I'll take a stone and one point. Uh, that's not me. That's me. Two points. Okay, have I done it right? David saying, I've always found decorations weak, even considered a house ruling it to ignore the arrow. Yeah, the arrow is personally one thing which I felt was an unnecessary extra fiddliness. Another little thing to remember. Um, but apparently decorations are quite strong. I was reading an article the other day that said decorations are quite strong. Anyway, we will see. So I've had my turn. It is now monkey's go. We have rolled seven, which is this. Yeah, if I take it out and put it there, this will work. I won't forget to move it then. So this is the construction action. Does it have a worker there? Yes. Does it have two stone? Yes. So it will spend that two stone. It will place this tile randomly rotated. Now that's a shame because this is the one that I was going to build. And it's going to go here. And it gets one point, two points, three points, and the temple. See, I remembered the temple. Oh, advances on the pyramid track. That's the bit I forgot. Advances on any temple, so it will move up this one, because that's the one it's highest on, which is another two points. There we go. Matt's got to go. Got to take the dog to the vet. Hope the dog's okay. But thank you very much, Matt, for, for joining in and all your help with the rules. It's all going to go wrong from here, because Matt's left. Uh, right, done that. Done the construction action. Those slide down. Please give me a tile that's good. No. No points for me. Right, then, that goes to there, that goes to there, this comes in, that goes to there, this flips over, and that goes to there. Making it look easy, but made mistakes for the first hour. What time is it? Half five. Wow. We should be done by six, hopefully, because I think Vicky's going to be home at six. What do you think, Loki? Not bothered at all. Literally no movement. Fast asleep. It's been a hard day, hasn't it? Just 
eating food and sleeping and chasing goals. Right. Last round before the end of the second era. Well, I got me one mask. <laughs> I was supposed to get more, but I kind of just forgot. And now I want to construct. Because I want to get... I at least want to get joint first on the pyramid track. So I'm going to have to do it. I'm just going to have to move one. So this is moving to here. I have to pay two cocoa because there are two different colours already there. I only have one worker there, so I get to build one bit and then I level up. Uh, and I might as well build this bit. Um, because I'm going to get some points for it. I'm going to put it on the middle level. Oh, sorry, level two. So it costs one wood and two stone. One wood and two stone. I'm going to put it here. Yeah, so I get three points anyway. And I'm covering over uh, two matching icons. And one of them's blue. Th I don't think this is an icon. I mean, it is an icon, but I don't think you get points for that. If you do, I'm missing a point from earlier. So that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. For some reason in my head, I always thought that was not an icon. I'm just going to check that in the rules. Construction. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Check the icons you're covering for each icon covered by the same icon. Yeah. So it is an icon. You do get it. Just checking the example. Yeah. So I'm owed a point from much earlier on. And now, did I just take my points? Oh. Did I just take my, what was it? One, two, three, four, five. And it should have been six. Did I just take the five points for placing the tile? Let me know in the chat. Am I owed five points or six points? But I'm advancing up on the blue temple while we're waiting. Uh, and I'm going to take the spend the gold to get four cocoa. One, two, three, four. Uh, Gnome says, you never considered it an icon either, but I think it is. I mean, it doesn't say it's not an icon. It's just not one of the fancy icons that can potentially trigger. And there's an example. Let's just check the example again to make sure I got it right. And no, you have not taken new points. So I'm actually owed six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. So in the example on page 16 says... Yada, 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 yada. Three points for the first level and three points for matching the icons. And three of the icons are matched and that funny squiggly little thing is an icon. Yeah, so it is an icon. There you go. Thank you very much, David. Thank you very much, Adam, for letting me know that I didn't score points, which I now have. So I've built. That slides down. We get a new one. I've already powered up the worker. Um... I need to advance on the pyramid track. And I think we're done for my, that was my last action of the second era. So hopefully, it's not gonna construct. What are we on? Eight. That's this tile here. So we find its highest worker, which is this one. And then it performs that action, which is decorations. Uh, yeah, so if the bot has two or more gold, yes. Does it have a little worker on the decorations board? Yes, it spends two gold, they're normally three, but it cheats, cheaty monkey. Uh, places the topmost decoration tile onto an available decoration space on the pyramid grid on the main board clockwise from the top. So topmost, that one. Clockwise from the top. Okay. And then the bot gains five victory points, advances on the pyramid track, and advances on any temple by one. Right, so it just goes there. Doesn't have to match anything. That goes up. Oh, it's, it's got ahead of me. Rats. 
um, and advances on any temple, which is the one that it's the most on. So it takes two resources, so it takes a stone and the stone. There you go. Right, I think. Uh, and Adam is saying it is an icon. Yes, it is an icon. It's most definitely an icon. It's just a smaller icon than the others. Um, right, so then that goes to there, that goes to there, that comes in, that goes to the bottom, that flips over and goes to there. And there we go. That is that, and that is the end. So we now have another eclipse. I'm going to reset these just while I'm, I'm doing it. And let's go through the eclipse scoring. So find the lowest visible number. Right, so uh, the number is four. One, two, three, four. We're both four spaces up, so we both score 16 points. Um, so what's that? 71 uh, and 66. Okay, that's the avenue of the dead scored. Pyramid track. Red is ahead on the pyramid track and scores four points. Boo. We then both score three points per space up, so I get six. Red gets nine, goes to 84. Pyramid track resets. Um, masks. I have one mask, so I have one set, so I score one point. Woohoo! Mask strategy. One cocoa per worker unless they're four or five. So I cost that took me two, four, five, six. I have to pay six cocoa. Monkey doesn't pay. Um, this is the second eclipse, so reset the light disc and move that to there. Yep. And then we draw, right, and then we do the starting tiles again. So I'm going to take the black workers off and the yellow workers off. Right, and here we go with the starting tiles. So the black workers are going on one, four, and five. And the yellow workers are going on three, eight, and five. Uh, so three, eight, and five. Three, eight, and five. There we go. Right, that's that done. And we're ready to go. So the final thingy, what's it? That should be on there. And do I have a plan? No, I still don't have a plan. I was building. That's what I was going to do. And I can still build and I can still build everything I want to build. So I'm going to move this two spaces to here. Unfortunately, it cost me three cocoa to go there. But because I have two workers there, I can build two things. And these aren't particularly ideal, but I'm going to do it to try and get some points and some spaces up in a temple. If the things will fit, no. These are all a bit rubbish. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put this one on first. I'm going to spend one wood and two stone and I'm going to put it there. So this gets me three points, four, five, six. That's six points to put that there. Do I want to do that? No. No, forget that six points. I'm taking, taking the wood back because I'm putting it there. Which gets me one, two, three points. Okay, so not, not as many. Three points. One, two, three. But now I'm building a second piece and this second piece is going to go here. And I'm going to build it with that one which is going to go there. So that's going to cost me one wood and two stone. And that gets me three, four, five, and a blue temple upgrade. So five points, one, two, three, four, five. A blue temple upgrade, which is two resources of my choice. I will take stone and it moves me two spaces up on the uh, pieces I've built in the pyramid this era track. Done. Right, monkey. Uh, double one, so it's doing that action, which is construction. Oh, we need to shuffle these down, put two more out. Does it have a worker here? Yes. Does it have two stone? Yes. So it builds. Um, so it's going to build this piece on the leftmost layer that it can. So I'm rotating it randomly. Rotatey, 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 and it goes there. And that gets it 
uh, the normal points for the building plus two, so that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Upper temple of its choice, so it goes up that one, gets another four. One, two, three, four. Zooming ahead. I mean, it does say that this bot is um, is for experienced players, and I'm not <laughs> at this game. Played it like four times uh, last year. I don't think I've played it this year at all. So yeah, I am very rusty at this game, but hopefully you're enjoying the video. Hopefully you're getting a good idea of how it plays. Solar bot is quite clever. Done that, done that, scores victory points, done that, done that, and it advances on the pyramid track. Okay, power up a worker on the relevant action board, advance it. So this powers up to five and therefore moves two spaces, one, two. Okay, done. Um, that moves down. My go. Oh, these go down and get a new one of them. These tiles are not working out for me. One, ones with things that are going to get me points. Yeah, I suppose that one's going to get me. Could go again. Oh, I think I forgot to level up one of my workers here when I built. And I should have replenished that decoration tile. Yeah, I think I did. So I'm going to level that one up to five. I'm going to go for another ascension, I think, because I'm down to two corn. Um, might be also time to do some lockage of workers. Just to get another mask, because why not? Now, if you put a second worker in here, you get a, you get a discount. That's interesting. Is that piece going to be any good? Meh. Sort of. Still three gold. It's a lot of gold. I mean, I don't have the gold. Do I go for the mask? Do I go up the Red Temple? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to move this worker to here and I'm going to worship. I've not done this worshipping yet. And I'm going to pay one cocoa. And I'm going to do both of these actions here. So it's moving up on the Red Temple which is two points. And also I'm going to take that, which costs a cocoa and a wood. But that worker is now locked. Can't do anything with it. Uh, and then we replenish that with a new tile. Oh, no, that's what that one does. I haven't got a clue. Right, monkeys go. Oh, forgot to do this. But thankfully, uh, we know where it came from. It came from there, so... That goes in there, that goes there, that flips over, and that goes to there. There you go. So we are on an eight, which is the top action. So it will buy a mask if it can. It doesn't have this one, uh, but it doesn't have the cocoa. It's not very good at buying masks, is it? Uh, it gains five cocoa instead. Powers up its lowest powered worker and then advances it. So five cocoa, powers up the lowest worker. Um, if David is still in the chat, the mask collection rule says that it powers up its lowest powered worker. I think that should say unlocked worker. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it should be its lowest powered unlocked worker, which is that one. So it powers up that one to four and then advances it and it moves twice because it's a four. Okay, that then goes to there, that then goes to there, this comes in at the bottom, that goes out, that gets flipped over and that goes up. There we go, and then this moves down. Time is ticking away. We don't have many points. How am I going to get more points? Build more stuff. We have two masks. That's not a lot. That's going to be like three bonus points at the end of the game. And there is, there's no more masks available. And there's also all these bonuses here that I haven't even looked at. Right, so. Are we going to go there and put another decoration on? If I do, I get a discount of a gold. Uh, so, yeah. But I don't have any cocoa. Ah, that's the problem. Let's move this one. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, and I'm going to take four cocoa. One, two, three, four. Done. Very simple turn. 
but I desperately needed the cocoa. Right, monkeys go. What have we rolled? We've rolled a 10, which is this action here. So this action is decorations. Does it have two gold? Yes. Does it have a worker there? Yes. So it will place a decoration and that goes there, that goes there, and it gets five points. One, two, three, four, five. What else does it do? Advances on the pyramid track and advances on any temple by one. So that moves to there. I think that's end game points. Yep. Uh, does that, does that. Power up the worker on the relevant action board. So it powers up to a six, which means it ascends. That goes there, that moves down one, and it gets five points for ascending. One, two, three, four, five. And then at the end of its round, that goes there. And another one of these. Okay. Uh, it never powers up the locked worker. Yeah, I didn't, didn't think it did. But a few times in the rule book, I think it said it powers up its unlocked worker. Uh, and then that time it didn't. Right, my go. We're definitely running out of time. We've probably got four goes left. And I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but I think I might place another decoration. Is there a decoration there that's actually going to get me some points? Well, yes, there is. But not many. And you don't get different points depending on the level, do you? It's just always three points. Yeah, three points and one up on the pyramid track. I mean, it does put me up on the pyramid track. Uh, but then again, if I went here, I could build two things, but I don't have the stone. How am I going to get the stone? Go around there, get myself some stone. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to move this work. I'm going to go one, two, three. I have to pay a cocoa. But now I get two stone and I level up to five. Two stone. Done. Monkeys go. Oh, again, we forgot to replace this. So that goes to there. That comes in. That goes there. This flips over and goes to there. Right. Now what's monkey going to do? Twelve. So it's doing this action, which is the construction. Does it have a worker here? No. Does it have a worker on the quarry? which is over there, no. So what does it do instead? Uh, if neither of the above steps is against five cocoa, which means it will trade in the 10 cocoa for three points. One, two, three. Um, powers up its lowest powered worker and advances it. So that's this one. There you go, right. done. This goes here, that goes there, this one flips, that one goes to there, that one goes to there. Done. Moves down. Right, my go. So I have lots of stone, uh, so I can, I can build two things again. So let's do it. So I'm going to move this to here. Uh, I can build two things. Now, something's going to get me some points. Yes, let's build that. Let's build it on the second level, which is one wood and two stone, and it's going there. So it's three points for the second level, plus another four, because I've matched all four icons. So that's seven points. I'm coming for you. Miles away. And move up on the... I've built a piece of the pyramid this turn track. Now my second one can't go on the next level because I'm short on a wood. Um, but I'm going to place this one again for one wood and two stone and it's going to be placed here. So that gets me three points, four points, five points and the move up on the blue temple. So five points, a move up on the blue temple, which will be two resources, which at this stage in the game, I'm just going to move this up another one now. Uh, Am I going to be able to build any more pieces of the pyramid? I'm not sure I am. Not at this stage. Hmm. And where am I? And where's that? And where can I go? 
do I just take two wood and build another house? It would be two points. It would move me up there for another three, but it would actually reduce that. What's here? Hmm. Okay. Let's have a think. What resources do I want to take? I'm going to take two gold. There we go. Right, so these resources are all spent. And I get to level up one of these workers. So I'm going to level up this one. Ascension. That comes back in a, as a one. And I get to take one of these things. Now, I'm a little bit short on the old corn. And it does seem a waste taking corn. But I can't afford to feed my workers the next time that comes round. So I'm just going to take the five corn. There we go. Right, my go done. Replenish these two tiles. Now it is monkey's go. Come on, monkey, what are you doing? You are four, which is this action here. So this is, does it have a worker down here? No, so it won't build a house. Does it have a worker on the forest? No. If either of the Buster gains five cocoa, powers up its lowest powered worker and advances it. So five cocoa, lowest powered worker is that one. So it goes to a three, which then advances to there. Done. Move down. My go. Yeah, we've got like three goes left now. Um, so we can do a decoration. And that'll only cost me one cocoa. So I think that's what I want to do. Um, and it's just trying to match these icons. Yeah, tricky. Can't match two of, oh no, I can. I can, excellent, right. So we're gonna use this worker here. We're gonna go one, two, I'm gonna pay a cocoa. And then I'm going to spend three gold uh, to place a thing. That levels up. I'm going to put that one on there. So I get two points because I've matched two icons. So only two points, but another three for placing the decoration. And I've moved up one on the pyramid track. And I move one up on the blue temple, which is two points. There you go. Catching up slightly. Uh, need one of these. That goes there. But we are very thin on resources now. Very, very thin on resources. Right, monkeys go, I forgot to do this again. So that goes to there, that comes in, that goes to the bottom, that one flips over, and that one goes up there. Yeah, next time I play this solo, if I don't do it on camera, I'm definitely using the app for this. <laughs> okay, we're on a three, so it's this icon again. So we find the highest powered dice, which is this one, and it performs that action. Does it have two gold? It does have two gold. So it's gonna move that, it's gonna place it there, and it gets five points. One, two, three, four, five. What else does it do? So decorations, advances on the pyramid track, and it advances up one temple. So that's moved to there, and it will get that six points. And I think it gets that points now. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and I think the rule is the same as Tolkien, that once one player's at the top, nobody else can be there. Which, by the way, not bragging, but that was my actual suggestion. I made that suggestion when we were developing Tolkien. Everybody liked the idea of it, so it stuck. And now it's kind of made its way into this game as well. So, yeah, quite pleased with that. Assuming that's the rule, which I think it is. Um, right, was that it? Advances on any temple, does that, does that. If either of the above steps were performed, power up the worker on the relevant action board, which is this. So it ascends, chooses five points, one, two, three, four, five. That comes back there on one, that moves down, and then that moves down again because that's the end of the round. Right, this is the last turn. Okay, my last go, what am I gonna do? 
There is not much that I can do. I'm so far behind on points. So far behind. Um, yeah, there really isn't much I can do now. I mean, I could just take two points. If I can get a red temple advancement, I can gain a couple of points. Which at this stage in the game is probably all I can do. Now, the problem here is all these technologies cost two gold now and I've only got one gold. I, I've got one gold, I've got no wood, I've got no stone, so we can't be doing any of that. We can't be doing any of that. There really isn't much I can do. How do I move up on the red temple? Is I go here, but I'm already there, so I can't kick myself out. I could go here. If I could get there, one, two, three, four. Nope, can't get there. Uh, yeah, otherwise I could have gone there and moved up one space on the red temple. That would have got me something. Uh, there's these, there's these bonuses actually, and I, I, I should have looked at these at the start of the game. It's probably a bit late on my last turn, but let's see what they do. So the royal tiles we have, score two points for each, whichever is lower, your position on the pyramid track or the power of the locked worker. Okay, well that's all right. That's four points. That's probably my best, best use of points. Yeah, two victory points each for whichever is lower. Your position on the pyramid track, which would be loads, or the power of your locked worker. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's just move this one. One, two. Now, I'm not going to do the action. There, there isn't an action at the, at the palace. So you don't actually pay. It's, it's, it's the worship action. And that doesn't cost. Uh, it doesn't have a main action. So you place them on royal tiles or on the general area to collect a cocoa. Um, yeah, or you can pay to do both things wherever it is. I'm sure I read that. Wherever worshipping is. Worship. Palace. Refer to the appendix. In the case of the following boards, uh, claim the discovery tile. Pay one cocoa. Yeah, oh right, so... In the palace, this option, is, yeah, you can't just pay a cocoa to take the tile in the palace. What you can do is if you're doing one of these things, you can then pay a cocoa to take the tile, which I will, because that's going to actually save me some cocoa. Not that it matters. Oh, look, that's come out too late. So I think this is going on here uh, and I get four points. You are correct. It says John Wheeler, uh, send your five for two tracks. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, moved the five, done an action, and then it would have leveled up, it would have gone to a six, and I could have moved up two tracks. <sighs> Never mind, I've done that. It was four points, that's fine. Right, what's Monkey gonna do his last action? Again, I forgot to switch this over. Uh, it's a two again, so it's this. So does it have two wood and a worker there? No. Does it have a worker on the forest space? No. So I think that's to get five cocoa. Five cocoa powers up its lowest worker and advances it. Right, so its lowest worker is that one. Powers up to a two, moves to there, gets five cocoa, trades in ten cocoa, gets three points. Boom, done. Right, final eclipse scoring. This is not going to be good. Well, it's four, one, two, three, it's 16 points for each of us on that track. So 16 onto six is 22, uh, 41, okay. I'm ahead on the pyramid track, so I get four points. One, two, three, four, and then it's two points per space, and I'm on space five, so that's 10. 36, it's on space three, so that's six points, 47. Um, masks, I have two different masks. So that's three points. One, two, three. Uh, pay cocoa per worker. Mm. Yeah, so I've got one, two, three, four, and that needs an extra one. So that costs five. And then if this is the third eclipse, the game is over. Right, and there is something else that you do for the third eclipse in the solo mode, which is 
one point for each leftover resource in cocoa. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, two victory points for each technology tile that it has a marker on. So that's six. And then 15 points for each temple bonus tile that it has reached, which is that one. So 15. One, two, 73. Ah, I thought I was close. There we go. I think that's it. Um, John saying the other dice are for collecting cocoa in board one. Not sure what you meant by that, but I think we are done. Now I lost, but that isn't surprising because I'm very, very rusty at this game. I certainly wasn't taking an optimal path through things. I wasn't really looking at the royal tiles and using them um, to the best that I could. I enjoyed playing the solo one. This bit's it's just remembering to do it and the next time I play I'm going to use the app there is an app it's on a website it's not really an app it's just a website thing but it does this bit for you and I'm and I'm going to do that I would definitely play this game again solo there are things that you can do in the game which are quite light where you can change the difficulty level um, because if you're not very good at the game like me and you get frustrated at never being able to win you can just tweak the difficulty down a bit so that you can actually then uh, you know play it and at least beat it but yeah I definitely didn't play very well at all I should have even used that on my last turn to prevent me paying the five cocoa but I don't think the resources matter that much um, at the end of the game they do for the for the bot but anyway we're done what time is it just after six o'clock I thought it would be about two hours uh, so thank you very much to everybody for helping me out with the rules Again, apologies if this was if you were expecting an absolutely 100% perfect rules tutorial. This is this is not. This was not a sponsored video. I've taken time out of my paid work to do this, um, just basically because of uh, the Patreon drive that I'm doing this month to do lots of live playthroughs. I'm doing eight this week. Uh, it's going to slow down in January. So in January, you're going to still see some live playthroughs, but you're going to see fewer of them. Uh, the quality is going to go up because I'm not going to be I'm not going to be doing eight a week. Um, and I'm going to be spending more time in learning the games beforehand in order to the, the, the videos are a little bit better quality. But also I have to make sure that the sponsored videos that I do have the top notch um, effort put into them. And, and the ones that I do that are not sponsored by the publishers, I, I, there's no way that I can take, you know, a whole day off to learn, repractice and everything else. Anyway, as mentioned at the start, I'm doing a Patreon drive this month. So... Thank you very much to everybody uh, who supports me on Patreon. Thank you very much to all of my new supporters. We have reached uh, goal number 10, which I wanted to reach by the end of this year. So that's good. That confirms that there'll be more solo playthroughs next year. So if you uh, if you watch this because you like watching solo playthroughs, then goal number 10 of the Patreon campaign has been unlocked. And you're going to see an extra playthrough now every month moving forward into 2020. Uh, Patreon supporters at producer level and above get to vote on what game so if you are a Patreon supporter and you know what game you want me to do in January, start sending me your ideas um, and I will basically put it to the vote. Thank you very much for everybody joining in, in the chat. David, Matt, uh, John, everybody else. Yeah, you can post the link. Let, let me know afterwards. I can, I can post the link. Nice playthrough says no. Thank you very much. Um, and we're all done. I didn't win. If I had time to play again now, I would. Um, and, you know, if I can't, if I, if I get up early tomorrow morning and I don't want to do some rulebook editing, I might just do this. Tomorrow, by the way, we have two live streams for you tomorrow. In the afternoon, we're doing uh, Towers of Amharb, which is a game from Mo Ideas, which uses the Towers of Hanoi mechanism. It's gone completely under the radar. I've not heard anybody talking about it or seeing it or anything, but I have a good re relationship with Mo Ideas. And although it's not a sponsored video, it's a game I wanted to cover for them because they've been really good for me, uh, really good supporters of mine of Mo Ideas. So I'm doing that tomorrow. I think that's two o'clock in the afternoon. And then we're doing My Abbey, which is a game from Haber. Uh, so Tiffany, who works for Haber, has given me some games, wants me to cover them on the channel. And My Abbey is Michael Kiesling. So I know Haber are famous for doing little yellow box kids games. They also do lighter games as well that aren't kids games. And we're doing My Abbey tomorrow afternoon, I think at four o'clock as well. Um, and the reason I'm not streaming tomorrow evening is it's my local games group that I run tomorrow. So that's where I will be tomorrow evening. But anyway, the next solo playthrough will be on Thursday at four o'clock, which will be Sensor Ghosts. And that'll be a 30 minute video, maybe a bit more, but it certainly won't be two hours. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Go and get some food. Thank you very much to everybody for joining in. Thank you to everybody for watching afterwards. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers all.
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.